Thank you. Uh, public comment? Um, no. no. Okay. Library report, we'll start out with adult services. Thank you, Mr. Um, My name is Jose Gonzalez. Let me show you what we've been up to. So here we are with the computer classes. So, so far we've been having like six to 11 patrons show up to our computer class. I mean, uh, I always say that uh, six or seven, but it seems like there's about 30 in the class because it's, they're so very interactive and the learning experience has been great. So we've been doing um, resume building, newspaper articles, budgeting with Excel. Um, now with you know, prices so high on many items, um, it's good to have a little bit of budget. But they did catch me off guard from the students because they're doing it on some apps. So they're, yeah. you know, they're like, OK, Excel good for school, but I have this app that I'm using, you know, that they can help them better. So they're learning, which is always great. But both here and, and Central would be having those numbers and, and great reports. So we have one more month to go in November, and then we'll see what we can, uh, what we're going to show and uh, what we're going to teach in coming up in January. Um, in regards to the little libraries, I went to nine for a total of 122 books. I'm very happy uh, to show that we have two new ones around the city. Uh, Ms. Bobby told me about Redmore Dog Park, which is by Draper. Yeah, that was pretty hard to find. But uh, it's around my neck of the woods, and I had no idea it was there. It's a beautiful park. Um, it's there by Jaime Zapata. And it's in the uh, Brownsville Dog Park. So it's the one over here on the left. That new one even has a little bird's nest so that birds can go in there and and uh, and then nest. And then the next door is one that uh, BTX Health, Danielle, she, Danielle Stedman, she actually sent me a message. She's like, Jose, we're proud to announce that we installed the library you all donated to us. And I went there on Saturday and I filled it up. It's right there on BTX Health, which is by Ringle. And that's the one that uh, we donated, donated to, to BTX and proudly it's already being displayed there on Ringle. So we already have uh, another library that's there. And yeah, the uh, read the, the BTX Health has a new uh, department uh, option for the, the Department of Health for <clears throat> we've been here a long time in Brando. That used to be the old it's on a ring between uh, 13th and 12th. They used to be where the ambulances were before, and then, then it became a gym. And you know, the health department claimed it, and basically that department, that room is used for employees to go and, and learn about uh, healthy habits and all that. So and and so that that's where the the, the it is now. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I try to find books on health, but you know sometimes donated books are not much about health or healthy living. So I filled them up with a bunch of children's books that I had. Um, and the one who over here on the side is a sports park that one needed um, attention too. So that one I wrote it down and uh, see if I can message uh, manager <clears throat> Daniel Salinas see if he can help me repair that one. Yeah, that one. And then right now I was told about the museum, so that's gonna be my first stop next time too. So, is the one in Prague up? I haven't seen it. I've passed by there. Because it was knocked down. You had a couple of our Rory members went mm -hmm. back and, and worked on it. And we ordered a new front door, I think, had been broken. Oh. And we ordered one and, and they installed it. And so it should be up if you'll check. And if it's not, let me know so that we can work on that. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Absolutely. That's on my list too. Thank you. And here we are. That's the Let's Get Cooking and the BTX Healthy Cooking class. That's the one that Juan was telling you all about healthy living there in BTX. It was beautiful because we had there was only a signage for up to 15 people. That's the room capacity. But we had 12 people, 12 out of 15. And uh, that hour and by so fast. And uh, people were very interested about healthy living and what we can we can teach them and what they can learn about healthy living. So we took a lot of information from here, you know, from every department and also about the knowledge that we have about healthy living. So it was such a great class. And um, again, establishing the rapport and the relationship with, with BTX Health Department. Um, it's a great collaboration effort. And then on top, in both branches, we had uh, Let's Get Cooking, uh, How to Make Flowers Tortillas. 
Um, it was it was so much fun because I, I actually did go to which is something else. And then on the other side at Central, they also did the same. So we had about uh, we have 52 patrons here show up for that and about 80, 80 plus over there at Central. So it was such a simple dish, but yet still very popular. Uh, and and if, they were really enjoying it. That they, they were enjoying it. So they were, yes, yes, on Central. Thank you. And our goal was to keep it healthy. So we did find a recipe that did not include lard and all that. It was just water, water and just some some magic. And um, it, it, um, thank you. And then next one. And then we had a tour here. So big thank you to uh, Ms. Gonzalez and her team from Big Heroes. They came over over here to Salmos for a tour. They contacted us and um, I gave them a tour all over the, the library and the report it was, it was beautiful. You know, they came over and also Ms. Molina was also another was very interested in a little library too. So uh, I uh, I messaged Commissioner Brian Martinez and um, and hopefully hopefully we can we can work together in in bringing a little library there to to big heroes pretty soon. Uh, but they were very interested in it. And also on the very bottom we have uh, virtual reality from Cameron Workforce. So thank you to Ms. Aika and her team that came over to do virtual reality. It's for career development, career building. Um, the majority of those kids that are there, they were actually learning how to do surgery. Uh, yes, and um, some of the images are, are look real. Uh, some people might see the graphic, but they were actually, if you want to go into that field, you're actually learning. So when you, when you see the, the lady there with the two handles, she's grabbing the utensils or so, the the uh, the tools, right, to actually do the surgery. So, it's something else about that though so it's very it was very interesting very interactive so hopefully we'll do that again in the near future and of course right now we're gonna have our scary story time with adults so that that's gonna be fun we already have everything ready we're gonna be doing some snake kebabs as well and uh over here on the side we're gonna be doing all those classes in october and we're gonna be showing movies scary movies too on uh, thursday october 24th here at, uh, at south Mosa and at central as well That's it. So that's homework. Definitely, I'll be stopping by Frank Zoriva and the museum as well. So for sure. Any questions? Thank you for that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have youth services. Yeah, that's all the fun is on the screen. Um, but in September, we had a couple of our programs so on the top left. That was the clay mosaic. Um, that one was more popular than I thought it was going to be. Um, the kids really had fun playing with the clay. And I had one little girl who was like, I love this. She's like, it lets me be creative. I was like, <laughs> um, so we did get a really good turnout for that. Um, and they really enjoyed it. Um, the picture kind of in the center, that was at our newest regular program, which is the Sensory Friendly Play Date. Um, it's slowly picking up. Um, we're trying to get the word out about it. I was a little bit nervous about how it worked out, but so far it's it's been okay. And the kids really seem to enjoy playing with the sensory bins. And then on the right side, that was our uh, library mini golf. So we set up a mini golf course here in the library. And um, I learned that a lot of kids don't know how to hold a golf club, so that was funny. Um, but it was still really fun, and we had kids going through like multiple times. They, they had fun. <laughs> and then, um, so this is some more pictures from Maine, like in the top left, that is our new, that's the Lego day. Um, right there in the middle was the sensory day. The sensory play date over there, and then on the right was their mini golf as well. As you can see, they're they're having fun, but they're struggling a little bit with the with the golf clubs. <laughs> um, so this is some photos from the 30th anniversary <coughs> celebration. Um, children's had had a couple of programs sprinkled in there. So on the top left, that's Ms. Suzanne Shepherd, the author of the Rocket Books for the Zoo. Um, she brought like a giant stuffed giraffe that was super cute and she read her book with the with the kids and they really, really enjoyed it. She had them like blasting off to the moon, so that was super sweet. Um, right there in the middle, uh, that is our mayor learning how to make a book. <laughs> uh, that was our make a book station. We gave the kids little uh, pre-folded books so that all they had to do was fill them in with their stories. 
And then on the right side, that was the um, Kid Create Studio. They joined us that day and they were making clay owls with the kids. So some of the things that have already passed in October, we had our toddler Halloween dance party. Um, we did our first dance party in the summer and the kids really, really loved it and were obsessed with bubbles. So we did a Halloween version of it. Um, we did our yarn spider webs, our Halloween wind chimes, um, which was just like fun DIY Halloween decor. Um, and then STEM Tree actually joined us um, for our kids' nights at the first one. They were over at Maine, and then at the second kids' night, they were here at Southmost, and they did spooky science, and they made Ootlick, which is a um, mixture of cornstarch and water. And it is a non-Newtonian fluid, so it's very messy, but it's really cool for the kids to experience because, like, if you put a lot of pressure on it, it gets really hard. But if you just, like, let it go, it's a, it's a very liquidy um, fluid. So they really thought that was cool. And then on Wednesday, we have our biggest event of the of October, which is our trunk or treat. Um, we have 29 organizations um, signed up to participate for that. That's not including any of the library tables. That's just outside organizations. Um, some people from the city, other departments, like uh, Engineering Public Works is going to be there. Um, Office of Emergency, Man or Emergency Management will be there. And then, of course, all of our other community partners. So we're really excited for that. Um, I have blew through that. Do we have any questions? Questions? Thank you for that report. Thank you. Just kudos to the celebration. I know it was a lot of work, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. could see all the patrons very excited happy and enjoying it so i know it's a lot of words behind the scenes so thank you it rarely rarely does an epic event like that hold without any complaints and there were no complaints from the public that they were aware of so that's that's a good thing it was amazing we, i came back my kids and yeah yeah they didn't want to leave we had church and they were like i was like we have to go but no they had so much fun y'all that was amazing yeah, yeah. excellent team services oh. I will be presenting uh, for PE today. Um, so first was our teen night. Um, this was the Oyatsu Surprise, September 3rd. Um, this one, they kind of do like a little virtual tour of Japan. So they watch vlogs um, from teens on YouTube to kind of get a feel of what the, the city looks like. And they also do like a tasting of typical school snacks in Japan. Um, and then next was the teen craft night with the creativity journal. This one, the teens were given um, a little journal. They could decorate uh, with stickers or um, with paint. Um, and they could also write in a few pages um, with really anything they felt like. Um, it could be manifesting or anything like that. Um, oh, right. Sorry. I forgot the stats. <laughs> For Oyatsu Surprise, there was a total of 45 um, teens in attendance. For the creativity journal, there was a total of 49. And then next was our teen anime night. This was September 24th at both branches. Um, this one, they watched the anime movie, My Hero Academia, World Heroes Mission. Um, and they got to um, do a little painting. I think this was with the little button pins. Um, and then for this one, there was a total of 13 in attendance. And then Teen Advisory Club, this was the Create Your First Resume. And then for this one, I believe there was three teens in attendance. And this was September 12th at the main branch. And then for October, there was one that I already passed. It was the Halloween costume planning. This was October 1st at both branches. Um, this one, it... We kind of help the teens with the costume planning and we can even do like 3D prints if the teens need like maybe there's like a sword or something small that they need like 3D printed to help out with the costume. Um, and then for that one. There's 19, 19 teens in total. And coming up is the do-it-yourself alebrijes. Um, that will be together with the Teen Advisory Club and Craft Nights. Um, that is coming up. Oh, wait, no, sorry. This one already passed October 10th at the main branch. Um, for the numbers, I think B is will be sharing um, the pictures and things like that for next month. 
And then Teen Anime Club is going to be a showing of the movie Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, along with a candy tasting that will be October 22nd, um, 5.30 at both branches. And then it's going to be the Teen Cosplay Contest that will be this Wednesday um, at the Trunk or Treat. Um, so teens will get to dress up as a character from their favorite um, show, anime, um, or, or movie. And does anyone have any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you for that. Makerspace. Hey guys, I'm going to be presenting the Makerspace updates. Um, so the September bird, I mean, it's like it's just called that. At Doc most the programs that we had for the Exploration Theater, uh, we had the numbers that you see on the screen for that event, and then uh, we also had the Sewing Rocks, and those are the numbers for that event. And that main um, is the numbers on the right side, same thing, Exploration Theater and Sewing Rocks. Uh, it has a lot more. <laughs> I was going to say, that I really affected the adults. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was fun. It was pretty yeah. popular to the point that uh, we had several people ask when we're going to do it again. So we're planning something similar for February, but uh, balancing things. I don't know. Uh, for October programming, uh, the close event already happened here at South Mills. We had 27 adults, eight teens, and 24 te uh, children. Um, there's the little girl holding hers, and all the pictures that you see here on the screen are from the event here at South Hubs. Uh, that same event will be happening at Maine on October 28th, so I don't have numbers for that yet. Um, and then ET is not for the alien, that's for Exploration Theater. <laughs> uh, it happened on October 17th, and then you can see the numbers for both South Mons and Maine on the screen for that as well. Uh, in November, we'll be making some winter wreaths. Uh, we're going to do winter wreaths instead of Christmas wreaths is because we have our own a whole other program uh, planned out for December. So we're calling them winter wreaths, uh, basically the opposite of the summer wreaths that may, we made during the summer. Um, so it'll be November 4th here and November 26th at Main Branch. Any questions? You want to? Thank you so much for that report. Yes. Outreach. Um, oh. Before we start the outreach, it's going to be a, just a real quick slide about the 30th um, anniversary of, at the main branch library. <clears throat> On the left hand side, we see like the cupcakes, we had the cake, we had a, a huge celebration, we had uh, 1,299 patrons come out and celebrate with us. We were super happy about that. Uh, we had over 10 different organizations. Uh, the majority of them were other city departments that came out and helped us celebrate. We had the car show, the classic <laughs> Bronzeville classes. Sorry. We had the, the Bronzeville classes come out and they had uh, like at least 20 cars out there showing uh, their wonderful collection. All of their members were really uh, interesting. They came out. We had the Baroque dance. Um, they came out with the jazz band. And then we have, you can see here, we also like had Vinatas to celebrate. We can see at the very top left, or top right, I'm sorry, we were passing out snacks and drinks. Uh, we had the zoo also come out to celebrate. Mr. Olivo gave a wonderful um, <laughs> speech for us <laughs> about the impact of the library for over the last 30 years. It, it was a lot of fun. We had a, a blast and we had a lot of people come out to celebrate the library. We were really wonderful happy. event. It really was well attended. Yeah. That was, that, that's it for mine. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And then questions? Anyone? Thanks for that report. Friends of the library. Oh, oh for the oh, outreach. Oh, outreach. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Outreach. I thought I skipped one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be presenting for Courtney. And as always, she gave me a script that she wanted me to read from. Um, first, she does want to say that she apologizes for being out again today. If you have any follow-up questions, you can email her at Courtney.Taylor at BrownsvilleTexas.com. 
And then our September outreach events begin with our celebration of library card sign up month. We hosted nine inreach tables promoting this month in which we give out free library cards. The technical services team helped give out special color changing cups to everyone who got a new card. And despite us being inside the library, we were able to get over 20 new library cards signed up while promoting our databases. And our second inreach event was tabling at our 30 year anniversary of the main branch location. We gave out commemorative keychains, cups, and helped with the raffle prizes for the day. Our outreach table saw over 1,200 people while they got to enjoy cake, uh, piñatas, performances, and wonderful speeches. It has been a joy to serve Brownsville for over 30 years, and our southmost branch will be celebrating their anniversary next year. I'm not sure about the, the month that will be. In September. September. In September. September. Thank you. And then for this one, we again enjoyed both the Farmer's Market and the Lunada Market in September. These are both collaborations with our Parks Department as well as the Brownsville Wellness Coalition. During the Lunada Market, we were able to promote the 30th and light up the market after dark as we spoke about our services. The Farmer's Market has a new program manager, Ms. Tomi, who has promoted us more on social media. She's working with us to find that sweet spot of market attendance. Uh, Mr. Allen, Andy, and Angie spoke about our makerspace services, including the 3D printing and our heat presses. And we then began our open house odyssey, collaborating with Rivera, Vestero, and Vela for their events. Mrs. Sarah and Melinda were in the Rivera library. They amazingly created 22 library cards winning the most cards produced for outreach this month. Then Avery and Mia got to talk about Tutor.com and our database help for nation history projects. They also promoted our trunk or treat and teen costume contest. Then Kayla and Maria visited Bestato Middle School, seeing the most people with 288 in attendance. They promoted teen anime nights and our youth services events. And overall, our fiscal year 2024 outreaches allowed us to speak with over 24,000 people while joining our community at events from our partners in education, such as BISD, Harmony, Jubilee, IDEA, and the Children's Museum, as well as UTRGV, to Community Health, uh, Driscoll, BCHC, and Tropical and Friendship of Women. From government agencies, Consular de Mexico, Cameron County, Housing Authority, to other departments, Parks, Health, B-Metro, PD, and Fire and Beyond. Our goal for next year is to increase our educational outreaches while maintaining our presence at community-based events. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I would like to add, before any questions, we met, thank you, Mr. Real, on the 26th of September with Dr. Tunda. Uh, 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 there was a collaboration meeting because in the past we have had issues with the previous director there where basically there was not a connection between um, BASD and the library and uh, she was very open again I want to thank you for yeah 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 and she wants to involve a committee about librarians and not so we can collaborate and one of the biggest things that the librarians I would use the excuse that they have a they have a very small budget and I told them, well, technically our budget, <laughs> our budget is their budget. So we're just a, another, another for them. So mm -hmm. it was a, a great start. And what was very grateful is that after the meeting, she recapped what we had talked about. And so we already have gone to a couple of events and we'll be going to another event, but we want this, we have the same audience. And we shouldn't be competing, we should be collaborating. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a good start. So this is I wanted to speak about that. Yeah. And I don't really want to share Cindy was very was very optimistic about yeah. the collaboration. Yeah. Uh, she did express that she wasn't too sure why this hadn't happened earlier. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to get into that. So I just said, Well, we're you know, we're here, let's move forward. And that was the same approach. Yeah. So uh she is they're very proactive right now, and right now. The Bronzo Library, I'm hoping, will support the BISD librarians because there is some political actions that wants to do away with the librarians. Uh, one idiot principal got up and said, I learned how to do this job in three minutes. And I 
like I told the librarians that uh, there, and they said, this is not true. You, this takes a lot of skill. It's not just, uh, oh, scan and, and you're out the door. That's one job, but there's mm -hmm. a thousand jobs to go with it. So they they are going to need. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're going to need support, especially from the browser library. And as long as I'm going to make sure that the superintendent is aware that the collaboration and all that. Uh, I have to see what the outcome of the, of the elections are so I can use. Whatever options I have so we can get further into bronze light and help protect the protect the librarians. Yes. Yeah. But the bottom line, we, we have the same comment and we yeah. have the kids. Yeah. And, yeah. And so that yeah. politics are not we, we still serve the kids right now. Yeah. Yeah. So well like, one campaign that we started is, uh, <laughs> tell your story, right? Because to the public it's the, con the concept is chicken in, chicken out books, right? Yeah. But there's, of course, much more than that. But kind of tell your story so that kind of put it like a marketing piece yeah. so that, you know, we share with the community the importance to have a librarian at a campus, right? Um, one thing that I um, that also I see is that they offer like a field trip option for schools to visit the public library yeah. as a end of year reward and so they'll go to the library and they'll have like a programming event for the kids kind of like a little tour stations for them to do as another bridge to connect that the schools with the library so i don't know the yeah. libraries have library clubs book clubs i've already talked to the one Battle books. Uh, Battle Battle books. Books. i've already talked to claudia chitino at stone she's very interested in bringing stealth students over to the library to do a the main one to do a tour and see what, what's available yeah so it, it was a good meeting and you know, let's okay. continue with that and one of the, another thing that i admire about her is that she was very upfront library is not my thing and she's learning to it and all you, all you had to do is just be honest you know and we're here to help each other where we really think they, they thought they knew it all i know we don't know it all we need to help each other um, Cindy and I were we've known each other for well uh, years. Anyway, uh, but uh, we start, she started as a teacher with me, and then I moved up to dean, and then we got principal. Now she's in charge of the libraries, so she's always willing to learn. So you're going to be used as a resource here. Yes. And if you notice, she had an actual librarian yeah. as her assistant yeah. to help her guide to the. Yeah, the guys will be. Thank you. And so the library. Oh, I Bobby wasn't going to be able to make it today. She had another meeting to attend to, but she had no updates to share. Books I made fourteen dollars today. And <laughs> 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 the books are, and this was before her lunch, so it was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the end of our agenda. We need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.